the playoffs are here. I should have made this video about a week ago, but I didn't because one, I was working on a big project for the um, first channel, as I said in the last video, and two, I can't like I I could have I could have made videos about the playoffs, but. I, when I did want to, I didn't have time, but when I was doing something else, I did have time, but I was doing something else. So, you know what I'm saying. Anyways, um, yeah, my point is, pretty much, um, the playoffs are here. And, we're about a week through the playoffs, so now I'm just gonna pretty much talk about every series and... Um, give my predictions at the beginning of the series and give my predictions now You know, so Yeah Let's start in the east with heat versus Hawks now with heat versus Hawks my original my original Prediction was heat in five and my prediction right now is still heat in five Trey Young can get a game like he did with the game winner, but I don't think he's getting more than that I think they're gonna get um, the Heat are gonna win two more games. Right now, the Heat are up two one, by the way. But yeah, I think the Heat are gonna get two more games. They have a game today, so we're gonna see if my prediction holds up. But it looks like the Heat got this. And just to talk about about the series, Trey Young has been clamped up. He was clamped up in games one and two. Game three, he showed a bit more, but um, game one and two, he was not a factor really he had 10 turnovers i think in game two so the he were doing great defending him and jimmy butler has been amazing he dropped 45 a few days ago and i think that might have been game two and he led the the heat to that win so jimmy butler is a playoff player the rest of the team is a playoff team and they are here to play for an nba championship so of course that starts in the first round Moving on, we got Philly, Toronto. Um, Philly um, is up 3-1 in the series. And my original prediction was Raps in 7. And honestly, as a Raptors fan, I'm keeping that prediction. It's just, there's no part of me that wants to lose hope for this series. Because... One, Doc Rivers has been known to blow leads. Two, Scotty Barnes is back, so he should be a factor. We didn't even have Gary Trent. We had like half of Gary Trent for the first two games. The third game was one on a game winner. And we had no Scotty Barnes. For we had half of Scotty Barnes for game one and none of him for the rest of the series. Um, Siakam played disgusting. Like he was not doing well at all in games one to three and van vliet you could probably say the same thing but he was doing a bit better than siakam i'd say but game four siakam definitely turned it on van vliet left the game but i don't know why because i not gonna lie i was not able to watch it but i know he left the game i think it had something to do with his knee but i don't know for sure but hopefully everything's fine with him and if everything stays fine i still do believe Raptors could win this in seven. Is that my biased Raptors fan? The biased Raptors fan in me talking? Maybe. Do I care? Not really. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Bucks versus Bulls. My original prediction for this series was Bucks in four. And the Bulls are taking a game, so that prediction is impossible. So. I'm going to say Bucks in maybe either 5 or 6. I'm really deciding between 5 and 6. Because I think the Bulls, if DeMar DeRozan plays the way he did in Game 3 or was there game, two, game 2, if he drops 40 or close to 40, if Levine plays well, if those guys do well and if Caruso puts it all together, then I think that the Bulls can do very good. Also, with the fact that Chris Milton is out, that takes away scoring option for the Bucks, and that could be crucial, especially in close game situations. Chris Milton is the guy who usually hits their shots for them, so, um, I mean, of course, you still have Giannis, two-time MVP, possibly three-time. Of course, you still have uh, Drew Holiday, 
you still have a bunch of guys who can be really good for them, of course, but Chris Milton was like that big shot maker for them. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um but I still think it's probably gonna end up being Bucks and Six. I'm gonna say six because Chris Milton isn't there. And um they're gonna need some extra scoring to get that in five. So if somebody like Jordan Warwick came out of a breakout game, then hey, maybe Bucks and five, you never know. Moving on. Um oh wait, should I talk about the series more? No, I don't really have much else to say. Except DeMar's been known to show them the playoffs in game one, you definitely saw he was non existent. Same for game three. Um, hopefully he doesn't stay t- to that like stereotype. I, is it what do you call it a stereotype? Hopefully he could just like remove playoff choker from his name, defrozen from his name, or just remove that from his name. Just become a be known as a good player in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, moving on. Um, Boston versus Brooklyn. This is the series everybody was talking about. And now it's 3-0. So, I, I, at first I had the Nets winning in 7. Because I thought that the, Bo- the Boston defense would af- be affected by the absence of Robert Williams. That defense stayed the same. They still... Of course, the Defensive Player of the Year, congrats, Marcus Smart. I forgot to mention, Scotty, Rookie of the Year, W. But yeah, Defensive Player of the Year, Marcus Smart, W. You got, um, the, bye-bye. Jason Tatum, who's been playing amazing defense on Kevin Durant, making him pretty much non-existent for the series. Well, not exactly non-existent, because he still has dropped 20, but... 20 for KD in the playoffs is low, especially based off what he did last year. People were calling, him the, were calling him the best player in the NBA. And I'm not saying that he's not the best player in the NBA, but I'm trying to say that, you know, it's it's weird to see him do not amazing in the playoffs. Kind of like how it's weird to see LeBron out of the playoffs. I remember the first year... LeBron was in the playoffs. It was so weird. Everybody was like, what? LeBron's not in the playoffs? Been in the playoffs the last 10 years and he didn't make it this year? Like, it's it's just weird to see. And even though that's th- it doesn't mean they're a terrible player, it still is just crazy because we expect so much from them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But the Boston defense has still been amazing. Jalen Brown, too. Can't forget about him. Al Horford. Um, their team has just been doing great defensive-wise and... You know, they're up 3-0 against the Nets. And, yeah, anything is possible, like I said, with the Raptors series. Like, you know, but I got Boston. In. I got, now, before it was Bo- is Brooklyn in 7, now I got Boston in 5. I think that if Kyrie and Katie can get one game, you know, but, like, there's it's probably Boston in 5. Um... Yeah, just to let you guys know, for the second round, my original predictions were He versus Raptors, Heat in six, Bucks versus Celtics, or Bucks versus Nets, or Celtics. If I, if they're going against the Nets, I had Bucks in seven. If they're going against the Celtics, I had Bucks in five. So yeah, and um, then I had Heat versus Bucks, Bucks in seven. And Bucks make the finals to go against the other guys who you'll find out eventually. Now, if I had to change those predictions up, I'd say if it was Celtics versus Bucks, still Bucks since probably say Bucks in six now. If it was Heat versus Raptors, still Heat in six. And then same thing for the conference finals. But it might change depending on when Chris Milton comes back. But yeah. Moving on, the Western Conference. We got Pelicans versus uh, Suns, and the Suns are currently up 2-1 in the series, but Devin Booker is out, and the Pelicans took a game, Brandon Ingram, and just like I expected, like I thought that the Pelicans would take a game from this team, and 
yeah, I thought that the, I thought it would be my original prediction for the series was Suns and five. Now, probably Suns and six. Now that Devin Booker is out, because Devin Booker being out definitely takes away a lot. He was an MVP candidate for some people this year, and now he's out. Like he brought so much to the team. He brought scoring. He brought a bit of playmaking. He was their leader. Well, not really. It was Chris Paul, but he was their best player you can be you don't have to be the best player to be the leader so chris paul is the leader but dan booker is definitely the best player but yeah um chris paul and deandre Ayton are gonna have to step up mikhail bridges will have to step up all these guys are gonna have to increase their roles because Devin booker is out and that's a lot of that's like 30 less points for your team and with 30 less points, I don't know how you're winning against this team, this Pelicans team with Brandon Ingram, CJ, Jonas Valanciunas, and it's just, what I love about this Pelicans team is this isn't even the best they can do. They could be so much better than this if they have, if they get Zion, they're gonna get Zion back, right? They get extra pieces this offseason to complete their team. Next year, you gotta start a lineup of CJ, Brandon Ingram, uh, Herb Jones, Zion, and Jonas Valanciunas off the bench. Jose Alvarado. Who else, who knows? Maybe I don't even know who who else you have. But the crazy thing is, if they had Josh Hart right now, they had to trade him for CJ, of course. But if they had Josh Hart right now with CJ still here, and then maybe Nikhil Alexander Walker too, this team would have so much potential, especially when Zion comes back. So next year, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what happens when Zion comes back, to see how good this team can be. But for now, probably Suns and Six. Um, but even with, the, with Devin Booker out, they might have a chance. You never know, but it's probably going to be Suns and Six. Moving on. Dallas versus Utah. This series has been very interesting. A lot of people talking about it. It's one of the two tied up 2-2 series right now so um yeah it's this is an interesting series uh the Mavs didn't have Luka for the first what was it three games yeah so um the Jazz of course were able to take one of them game one the games two and three um the Mavs were able to take it off of Jalen Brunson's 40 point performance and Max Kleber's what how many threes was that I don't even know. He, I think he had like eight threes, but yeah. Um, the Mavs have been doing good, and there have been flaws in the Jazz defense. Many people have pointed out, including Kenny Farrell, Um and he pointed out how the Jazz are the Jazz don't have good, good perimeter defenders. So Jalen Brunson has been penetrating the defense. Going right in, and since the Jazz don't have good perimeter defenders, the, the Mavericks have just been able to get in there. And then the Rudy comes to help defense, and Rudy's a man who is always a shooter, like Maxi Kleber, Davis Bertans, ends up open at the three-point line, and they can't close out fast enough, which means it's wide open three for the Dallas Mavericks and another three points, and that's how they've been getting this, these wins, really. Um, penetrating the defense, getting shooters open, and it's been working. It has been working very, very well. So, I think they're going to continue to do that. And especially with Luka back, that'll make that a lot easier because Luka, he can create for himself and he can penetrate the defense to get assists. So, um, yeah, I think the Mavs should win this series in six. It could go to a seven. My original prediction was Mavs in. I forgot actually. It was either Mavs in six and Mavs in seven, and I think I'm gonna say Mavs. It should be Mavs in six, but if the Jazz can possibly steal a game, Mavs in seven. I do want the Jazz to win this game because I like Donovan Mitchell, and I'd want to see a Jazz versus Suns series because we never got to see that last year, and we were everybody was hyping it up. So if we could see that this year, that would be amazing. But the chances of that happening are pretty low, especially based on the way things are going right now. So, you know. 
then we got warriors nuggets warriors nuggets that's a very very interesting series um actually not really jordan Poole has pretty much become the third splash brother and now they're pretty much splash triplets because jordan Poole has been absolutely amazing this playoff run um, he dropped 30 in a, a, a game a few days ago. One game that Splash Triplets had 26 plus each. And they combined for like, what, 80 points? So, yeah. This team is ridiculous. You can't forget about Draymond, who is pretty much the key to that whole offense and defense. He's the key to the whole team. He's the heart. He's the leader, pretty much. You got Aunt Andrew Wiggins, the all-star. It's, that's so weird like how is he an all-star bro like no disrespect but how is he an all -star? it's so weird to think about is Andrew Wiggins even playing right now though because you know what let me check let me actually check this is Andrew Wiggins playing right now bro because I really do not know I gotta check that did he play in their last game? Because I have not been watching these games very intently. Uh, I have watched some of the Raptors games. I was able to watch some of the Jazz Mavericks games. So, you know, but... Yeah. Has Andrew Wiggins... So Andrew Wiggins has been playing. I have not heard anything about Andrew Wiggins, man. Andrew Wiggins has been playing. I um, but yeah, Andrew Wiggins is still there, the All Star. And you got the rest of the team. You got Iggy, who's got championship experience. You got Otto Porter, who just has NBA experience and he's playoff experience, a bit of playoff experience with the Wizards back then. You also got uh, Gary Payton the second, who is a defensive monster and he brings a lot of energy to the team. Kevon Looney, who's been a decent big. And you can't forget this is without James Wiseman. I don't know how James Wiseman is going to fit with this team. But he's still a pretty good player as far as I know. And I think he still could add something to this team. It's really just because if Jokic had Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. this year. He would definitely be doing a lot better. They'd probably be a higher seed in this playoffs. And he wouldn't be down 3-0 right now. But... Jokic has had to carry this whole series. His second best player is pretty much Will Barton because Aaron Gordon forgot how to shoot. So, um, yeah, not this year, my guy. Next year, this is what I keep on saying. For the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Pelicans, the, um, what other teams? I don't even know who else. Just wait until next year when your stars come back. That's when it's serious, man. You could even say that for the Cavs too, because Colin Sexton's been out. What, just wait until next year when your stars come back, when your young players get better, and it's a GG. Um, but yeah, uh, probably gonna end up being Golden State in a sweep. My original prediction was Golden State in like six. Maybe Jokic could get a game. So you know, I'll say go, I'll go, I'll say Golden State in five, but it's not looking good right now. Moving on, Memphis, Minnesota. This series is probably going to be the interesting one. It's fitting that's the last one we talk about. Memphis, of course, you got John Morant and the team that is the best team of all time without John Morant. <laughs> so, you know, but then you also got the Timberwolves with Patrick Beverly, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell. And this is a good series, man. I like this series. I really like this series. Like, it's very fun to watch. The Timberwolves could have been up 3-1 right now. They could have been up 3-1. And it's like they blew that lead in game 3. But if they didn't blow that lead, it'd be they'd be up 3-1 right now to the 2 seed. And they were in the playing tournament. Like that's crazy. Kyrie Anthony Towns kind of woke up in game 4. He was kind of just bad. Not non-existent even. He was just really bad. He was existing and he was bad. 
and that makes a negative in- impact to the team and that's what you don't want to be that's what you don't want to do so um that was kind of bad but um the rest of the team's been good anthony edwards has been showing out in his first year in the playoffs uh he's been doing well same for actually no d'angelo russell is his second year in the playoffs but d'angelo russell has also been doing really good um providing that extra scoring patrick beverly has been the leader of this team the heart and soul of this team and he's given all the teammates all the young guys this dog mentality and you love to see it um and then you can't forget about the supporting cast Jaden mcdaniels um there's nas reed malik beasley all these guys have stepped up and been playing great leading this team to wins well not leading but they've been helping this team to wins this whole team's been doing great and i've heard people saying oh carnity towns is overrated anthony edwards is the leader of the team don't overreact my guy please don't overreact to, the, to whatever happens in the playoffs like you could react but don't overreact because soon you're gonna have people saying oh um because everybody always overreacts in the playoffs whoever wins the championship wins finals mvp is automatically the best player in the league and honestly that's not true because next year they might not come back and do the same exact thing for example Kawhi from 2019 to 2020 he was the best player in the world in 2019 then 2020 he came back and all of a sudden now it's LeBron then 2021 he came back all of a sudden it's Giannis or KD then 2022 now who knows what's gonna be maybe people are gonna go back to saying Curry some people saying Jokic which is interesting anyways don't overreact to the playoffs that's what I'm trying to say but for my prediction for this series I'd have to say my original prediction was Memphis in seven I'm probably gonna stick to that prediction Memphis in seven because the Timberwolves are good but I don't think they're good enough I don't th- I think they might be a bit too young next year you never know what's gonna happen because they're probably gonna bring the same team back maybe get a few extra pieces but right now i don't think they're ready yet just not just yet uh so yeah um just to recap oh wait also my prediction for the rest of the playoffs originally for the the series um originally i had phoenix versus dallas phoenix and six golden state versus memphis golden state and five i if i can remember correctly five then golden state versus phoenix golden state in seven and i had warriors versus bucks in the finals warriors in seven so that still could happen but i don't know how realistic it is considering the suns don't have done booker i think the warriors are still going to come out the west because i don't see another team in this western conference other than the suns but they don't have their best player I don't see another team here that could be as dominant as the Warriors, especially the Warriors having Curry, Jordan Poole being amazing, Clay's back, Draymond's leading their team, Andrew Wiggins the All-Star, <laughs> and the supporting cast. It's it's just too much. And um I mean if the Warriors don't do it, the Suns don't do it, I guess you still have the Jazz who could be a dark horse to win that championship. Or make the finals, I guess. You still have the um, Mavericks. You still have the Grizzlies. You never know. Maybe even the Timberwolves. But, yeah. Um, it's probably going to end up being the Warriors. And, um, yeah. Just a quick recap. My predictions for each series right now. Heat in 5. Versus, so, Heat, Hawks. Heat in... Mmm... F- Heat in five. Philly, Toronto, Toronto in seven. Trust me. <laughs> I already know you guys think I'm stupid for saying that, but <laughs> honestly, I I have hope, bro. <laughs> I have hope. Um, Milwaukee, Chicago, and I keep dropping my phone. Milwaukee in six, depending on when how Chris Milton's doing, or depending on if the other guys step up. Milwaukee in six or five probably gonna end up being six Boston Brooklyn I got 
Boston in sit in five. Uh, Phoenix, New Orleans, Phoenix in six. Dallas, Utah, I got Dallas in six or seven. Really, probably gonna be seven. I'm actually not think about it. If if the guys play good defense, like all these series are like depending on something. Like it depends on if this guy does good, if this guy gets does well, if this guy gets injured, if this guy, you know. So yeah. Then Golden State, Denver. You got Golden State in four or five. Probably gonna end up being probably four realistically, but five if Jokic can get them a win then you got memphis minnesota memphis in seven and yeah um my prediction to win the nba championship is the golden state warriors so yeah we could go back to look at this the nba and at the end of the playoffs and see who is right who is wrong all that stuff but um yeah that's my prediction right now yeah um i'm gonna try and be as consistent as i can talking about the nba playoffs hopefully hopefully um but yeah that's pretty much all i gotta say and you know perhaps in seven uh also funny story i've been recently trolling people in house of highlights whenever house of highlights posts anything about the raptors losing or about joel and bead I say L plus ratio bozo raps in seven or raps in six. I used to say raps in six, but now I say raps in seven. And at first, people would always get mad at me and say, "Oh, you're wrong, you're wrong." Now, people are like, "Oh, I don't really care." Look in those comments. Look for Speedy City's comment. You'll find it there. And I was just trolling people, man. That was that was fun. Anyways, um, if you enjoyed, like, subscribe, or please like subscribe share comment down below any tips tricks or ideas or no or topics tips tricks tips tricks ideas is the main channel tips tricks topics is this channel yes okay tips tricks or topics that you have me talk about on this channel i'm probably gonna make a video about the lakers in this off season and that'll be interesting but um, that's gonna be more in-depth video. It's not just gonna be 2K gameplay in the background. It's actually gonna be highlights and, um, you know, like, if you go back to the What's Wrong With The Raptors video, it's gonna be that, both the, the Lakers. So, you know, yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.